Hi everybody, this is Michael McAvoy and I'm going to talk to you today about the problems with most blood tests. So first of all, I'll start out by saying that on a standard routine blood test, there are a tremendous amount of factors that can be used to assess different bodily functions. And there's, these functions include digestion, hydration, liver and gallbladder, detoxification, protein synthesis, protein metabolism, inflammation, your body's response to inflammation, immune-related activity, a whole variety of different factors are found on a standard routine blood test, but there are problems with the blood test. First of all, most phys physicians, when they order the blood test, they're only going to test certain things. Oh, let's just test the lipid panel or the cholesterol today, or oh, let's just run a CBC today and forget about everything else. Well, wait a second. You can't just look at isolated parts of the body to get an assessment of what's really going on. You've got to look at the whole picture. So what I'm saying is that you need to look at the CBC, the metabolic panel, and the lipid panel together concomitantly to get this synthesized view and perspective of what's really going on in the body on all these different layers at once rather than just isolated layers. So that first of all, if you're only getting on a blood test isolated factors being assessed, there's going to be a lot of problems with being able to really identify what's going on. So that's the first problem with most blood tests. The second problem is that if the clinician or the physician, whoever's interpreting the blood test, is using laboratory reference ranges, this is a really misleading way of doing it because laboratory reference ranges are statistical averages which have been taken from relatively an unhealthy population of people. And so it's so common, it's so extraordinarily common to see that on blood chemistry factors in one lab, the reference range is, let's say, glucose may be between 80 and 100. But from another lab, it may be, any, it may be as high as 110. Or another example of that would be insulin. The, the range is so wide and ridiculous among the different labs there's no possible way that the clinician, whoever's interpreting the test, can even understand how to read the test because the lab reference ranges are merely statistical averages, not ideal values. And furthermore, these can vary from, from lab to lab, so the inconsistencies are very abound and easy to, to uh, have, have inconsistencies unless you have an understanding of how to interpret the blood test functionally rather than allopathically, rather than from a disease-specific model of healthcare, which I try to stay away from. I don't try to deal with diseases and symptoms. I try to assess function, teach people about functionality and how all the blood chemistry factors on the test fit together. So that's the second thing. The third thing is that on a basic blood test, the way that it's being interpreted most of the time is that the clinician, whoever's doing the interpretation, saying, oh, very good, this level is within range. Oh, very uh, very bad, this, this level is too low or too high. This is low, that is high. Well, no doubt that there should be established reference ranges that exist. Obviously, you need to have a concise measurement for what really the ideal value is for each individual blood chemistry factor. However, it's more important to view the body's holistic nature and how all the blood chemistry factors fit together. So just by looking at the potassium level and saying, oh, 4.9, you know, that's a high potassium level. You better cut back on the bananas or something absurd like that. It doesn't make any sense because, first of all, potassium on a blood test may have absolutely nothing at all to do with your dietary potassium intake. And second of all, you cannot really logically assess the electrolytes of the body by just looking at the potassium. You've got to look at the sodium, the chloride, the bicarbonate, the calcium, the phosphorus. The whole system of electrolytes need to be assessed, not just one. So the other thing that came back just recently, somebody said that, oh, my doctor found out that I had uh, you know, low ferritin, which is the storage form of iron. Yet at the same time, the, the serum iron was elevated. It was, it was greater than 100. And so they, they had her put, go on iron supplements. And I think that this is ridiculous because they're not fully understanding the functional relationships of everything that's going on in the body that is causing that particular factor to look aberrated, to look out of range. So you've got to know what to look for. and You've got to have an in-depth understanding of 
how things fit together on a blood test and how to interpret the test functionally rather than pathologically. So those are the three primary problems that come up with interpreting most blood tests is that the ranges are too wide, the doctor or the nutritionist, whoever's interpreting the test, is approaching it from an allopathic, disease-specific model, and also that they're not taking into account the functional relationships that exist that, that, all, that make all the chemistry factors fit together, and that they may not even be testing for all the important factors on the test. So, on, uh, I wanted to give you that introduction. You can watch more of the videos I've done on blood chemistry analysis. On uh, Thursday, August 2nd, 2012, in Chicago, Illinois, I will be giving a two-hour PowerPoint presentation on Blood Test Interpretation 101 at Whole Body Fitness Chicago at 7 p.m. Highly recommend that you come to that talk, whether you're the average layperson or if you're somebody that just wants to get a better understanding of blood chemistry, if you're a fitness professional or a nutritionist or a doctor or whoever, it would be a highly informative talk that's going to be just jam-packed with critical information that's going to allow you to take control of your health and be able to, when you, when you come to this presentation, you'll be able to get inside information so that you can start interpreting your own blood tests and being able to understand what to look for, what functions may be off, what certain things may indicate on a blood test. So I highly recommend it. Thursday, August 2nd, 2012 at Whole Body Fitness Chicago. Uh, look, to, look forward to seeing you then. Until we meet again next time, take care.